guys, I'm glad you could join me today. Today we're going to talk about one of the things that we first learn when we get into martial arts and that usually gives people a bunch of headaches when they first start, and that's about how to properly tie our belt. Okay, so the first method is what we call the hand switch, and this is also probably the most common method for tying your belt. First we want to take our kimono, we want to make sure that we go left over right. Okay? We're going to take our belt, and we're going to find the center of the belt. Okay? We'll take the center of the belt. I'm going to put that right where I want my knot to be. I want to make sure it's below my belly button, right on my waist, right, right about where my belt buckle would be. So I'm going to put that there. I'm going to take my hands. I'm going to go around back. Okay. And when I get back behind here, I'm going to switch hands like this here. Okay. Come back around the front. And once I have this, I'm going to lay one down on top. And then I'm going to take the other tail and I'm going to put it on top of that one. Once I have this position here, I'm going to take that tail that's on top and I'm going to go underneath both layers of the belt. Both layers. Okay? So I should have this right here. I want to make sure that this is nice and flat. I don't want everything twisted up. Okay? So it's nice and flat right here. Now I have a top tail and I have a bottom tail. So I'm going to take the bottom tail and I'm going to flip it over one time. A lot of people don't talk about this. This is where they get all confused, but the bottom one gets flipped over. So I can see both sides. One of the reasons why I like to wear this raggedy old belt is to help you guys, for this video, is to help you guys see two sides, because one side's a little bit more shredded up than the other over time, right? So when I flip this, I can see both sides, both sides of the belt, the bottom tail. I'm going to take the top tail, I'm going to go right on top of that, weave it back underneath and through, and I'm going to pull to the sides, just like that pull to the sides, right? That right there is what we call our standard knot, okay? Our standard. Now there's going to be two different types of knots we're going to talk about, but this is our standard knot. So with this knot, which we call our standard knot, right, we're going to have a little arrow right here. So you can see how the two pieces of the belt kind of go to the inside and they go into this, this sort of triangular piece right here. So it looks like the, there's an arrow pointing in this direction, right? So that's anyways what we call our hand switch method for wrapping the belt okay, with our standard knot variation. Now, let's look at this another way. Okay, so with this one, uh, we're still going to do the hand switch variation. I have a different kind of belt right here. This belt has uh, a stripe on one side and no stripe on the other. And the reason why I specifically chose this belt is so that you can see how we do that knot one more time okay, for our standard knot. So I'm going to do my hand switch variation. So I find the center, I go around both of the back, or switch them in the back, come back around to the front, Lay one down, lay the other one down on top. I'll make sure I feed my tail underneath both layers. And we get here, so this is nice and flat, right? So here you see my bottom tail. Right now we've got the side with no mark or no stripe, so it's just plain. When I do that flip, see I flip it here so you can see both sides. You can see the stripe and the no stripe side. So if you didn't understand what I meant by both sides, I thought maybe the, having the stripe would illustrate a little bit better for you guys, okay? And again, the top goes on top. Right, and we pull it down and through. We want to pull to the sides for our standard knot, to the sides. What we do not want to do when we get to this part right here, I see a lot of people, they pull up and down and they go like this to tie their belt. That is not what we're looking for at all. Right, so we want to make sure when we get here for that standard knot, pull to the sides, and we just kind of help it come down a little bit. All right, all right so we're going to do this from a top view so it's a little bit easier for you guys if you're looking down. And we take the center of the belt, we put it where we want our knot to be, right, right under our belly button. We're going to take both hands for the hand switch method. We're going to go around back. We're going to switch the hands, come around forward. We're going to lay one down. The other one goes on top of that, right? And then that one we just laid on top feeds underneath both layers, just like that. I like to pull it a little tight here, make sure this, this center area is kind of flat, okay? Now for the standard knot, we're going to take our bottom tail. We're going to flip that bottom tail over so I can see both the both sides of the belt right there. I'm going to lay my top tail flat on top. I'm going to take that top, I'm going to go underneath to the bottom and pull to the sides. Not up and down, I'm going to pull to the sides. All right. And there we have our hand switch method with our standard knot. Okay, so that was the hand switch method. Now the hand switch method, like I said, is probably the most common method. but there is one problem with it. Um, I wouldn't say it's a problem, but it's a stylistic difference. So with the hand switch method, we're left with one thing. If you look back here, we have this kind of crisscross layer going out with the belt. 
It's sort of, uh, it's, it's not one solid piece, right? So, how do we fix that? How do we make it one solid piece? There's two different methods that I use, and the first one that we're going to talk about is what we call the double wrap. All right, so with the double wrap, I'm going to take a tail of my belt, okay? I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to put it kind of about halfway through on the small of my back. Okay? About halfway through on the small of my back. Now, I'm going to take my belt, and I'm going to wrap it all the way around, making sure that I go on top of that. All right? I go all the way around once, and I'm going to go all the way around again, hence the title, the double wrap. So now I only have one tail. I'm going to take that tail, and again, I'm going to go underneath both layers of the belt. Okay, so on my bottom layer, so now here you're going to see three layers, right? The bottom layer is going to be our other tail, so we need to pull that bottom layer down and untuck it. Okay, now you're going to have to adjust this a little bit to get your tails kind of even, but now if you look around, right, now this is one solid piece, all right? Looks very nice. So now, again, for our standard knot, we're just going to flip this over, take our two tails, flip our bottom tail over one time so I can see both sides of it. So the top tail on top, pull it through and pull to the sides. I'll just give it a little push down, right? Pull to the sides. And right, that's our double wrap variation. Okay, so again, we're going to do the double wrap variation, more of a point of view angle now. So I take the tip of my belt, I'm going to put it in the small of my back about halfway around. I'm going to take my belt, I'm going to go all the way across, I'm going to go on top of that tail, I'm going to wrap it one time. As I continue to wrap, I'm going to put it on top. Come around a second time, hence the phrase double wrap. When I get around to the front, I'm only going to have the single tail. So I want to go underneath both layers, both layers. So I pull it through, and now I've got to take the, the one I'm underneath, that third layer, and I've got to pull it out, because that's going to be my tail. Right? Now here sometimes we wind up with one longer than the other, right? So if I have one longer than the other, I need to kind of adjust it a little bit until I get them roughly, roughly the same length. So again, I want to make sure I'm flat right here. I'm going to take my bottom tail, flip it over once so I can see both sides of the belt. Right? Top tail goes on top for our standard knot. Pull it through and then to the sides to the sides and always make our little adjustment. That's going to be your double wrap variation. Alright, so the nice thing about the double wrap variation was that we had one solid piece going around the back, right? Well there's one more method we, that, that I like to do anyways that does that one solid piece going around the back. This is actually the way I first learned when I was a little kid when I was seven years old and this is the way that that I do. I really don't see a lot of other people do this method, but this is the way that I do it. This is the way I like it anyways. All right, so I'm still going to find the center of my belt, all right? Put my kimono left on top of right, and I'll put that knot exactly where I want, or put the center exactly where I want my knot to be, okay? I'm going to take one tail, and I'm going to swing it all the way around, and I'm going to catch it on that side, hence why we call it the catch, all right? So once I do that, I'm going to move the one that I, I pinned down and set down the one that I caught. I'm going to lay my other one on top, so now i got this big, long, huge tail. Now I'm going to wrap that one around so that it's in line. So it's in line, so it's one solid belt. As I come around to the front now, I simply take that top and I go underneath both layers. Again, we're going to do our standard knot. Go underneath both layers. Flip the bottom tail so I can see both sides. Put the top tail on top. Bring it down and through and pull to the sides. All right, pull to the sides. So let's look at that one more time, right? So when I do this method, find the center of the belt. I'll put it right where I want my knot to be. And this is the key part. I throw this around here and I catch. Now, sometimes if I'm having a good day, if I'm slick, I can bring it around, I can catch it with my pinky. I can't always catch it with my pinky. Sometimes you have a stiffer belt, you might have to bring it around and catch it with your forearm like that. Now I can just simply grab it and make the switch because that switch is important. Okay, that switch is important. Find my knot, bring it around, make the catch. When I make the catch, I make the switch. Then I just bring it around, 
tuck underneath both layers. Make sure my belt ends are similar length. Flip my bottom tail, put the top tail on top, bring through, and pull the sides. By now, you guys, the standard knot has got to be amazing. You've seen this thing like a hundred times. Alright, so one more time, the catch method, point of view angle. I'm going to take the center of the belt, put it where we want our knot to be. I'm going to hold it down. I'm going to take one tail. I'm going to throw it around. I'm going to catch it. Right? Once I catch it, I'm going to grab it. I'm going to switch and then put it back on top. Okay? Once I do that, I'm going to bring this around. Make sure that my top tail goes underneath both layers. Right? So we've got top and bottom. Bottom tail flips over. Top goes on top. Pull it down and through, and then we always pull to the sides. And that's going to be your catch method. Okay, so up until now, we've had three methods of actually wrapping the belt around our waist, right? We've had the hand switch method, we've had the double wrap method, and we've had the catch method. And for all of them, I've used the standard knot. But we're going to have one more knot we're going to talk about really quick, and that's going to be what I call the grappler's knot. So, here's the difference. Uh, I'll use standard knot like when I'm teaching, uh, or I'll use standard knot if I'm, if I'm working with the kids' class or something like that. Um, basically, anytime I'm not rolling around. Uh, when you get into grappling and rolling around with somebody, you'll notice that the standard knot will come untied pretty quickly. Okay? And so, what we're going to do here, when that happens, we do what we call a grappler's knot. So, this is how you're going to do the grappler's knot. I've already taken my belt, and I've already used the catch method to tie it. When I do a grappler's knot, I try to use either the catch method or the double wrap method to, to actually wrap the belt around my waist. So I want to make sure that I've got the nice solid belt piece. Okay? So, I've already used the, the catch method to get to here. So now it starts the same way. I'm going to flip the bottom tail. I'm going to bring the top tail over, and I'm going to bring it through. And normally, right, right here, we just cinch it down tight. Cinching it down tight would give us our standard knot. But because I want the grappler's knot, I want to stop here where I'm a little loose. Okay? Now, I'm going to take the tail, and I'm going to separate the two layers. And I'm going to put the tail between the two layers. All right? Between the two layers. I'm going to do the same over here. I'm going to take the tail. I'm going to separate the two layers. I'm going to put it between the two layers. All right, so now, loose, it kind of looks like this. And then from here, I'm going to take those, and I'm just going to tighten them down. All right? Now, if you look, you'll see that my tails are locked into place. This is a much stronger knot. It's a lot harder to, to come undone when we're rolling, which is why we call this the grappler's knot variation. All right? So you have your standard variation. You have a grappler's knot variation. All right, so now you've got your three methods for wrapping the belt. You've got two different methods for tying the belt, but now let's talk about something. Now we're, we're, we're down the line. You guys have earned your black belts or, or, or whatever, whatever style you're in. It doesn't really matter, but you have embroidery on your belt. I see now people are doing embroidery on their belt, whether they're a black belt or not. It doesn't really matter. You'll be able to use this if you have embroidery on your belt. So uh, I have here a belt it's from uh, another old style of mine. I actually picked one that had yellow embroidery, just so it'd be easier for you guys to see. Okay? Now... If I'm going to do a standard knot, okay, it doesn't matter my wrap variation, if I'm going to do a standard knot, I want to make sure that I put the embroidery on the inside so it's facing each other, okay, on the inside, so it'd be in this part of the belt right here. So now, I'll just do my catch method because that's the method I'm quickest at, okay, I put my, my spot where I want my knot to be, I whip it around, get my catch, right, get my switch, Come around and now when I tuck right, and I flip and I tie this with a standard knot, now my embroidery is going to be on the outsides of my belt. So if I was standing to the side, you can see the embroidery. Right? If I stand to the side, you can see the embroidery. Or if I wanted to, I could just turn this in slightly and make it easier to kind of kind of display that for those of you, those of you that want your belt to look nice. Right? If I were to have it the other way around, Okay. If I were to have my embroidery on the outside of the belt and I use a standard knot variation, 
what happens is I wind up with my embroidery on the inside on the insides of the belt makes it hard to see hard to display I mean if you spent the money for the embroidery on the belt you want it displayed we might as well make sure we display it right so we don't want it so much on the inside because now you can't see it so if you're going to do the standard knot we want to make sure that our embroidery faces each other so it's on the inside okay we want it on the inside like that. Okay, so just to make this a little bit easier, in case you're having trouble seeing the black on black, I've gone back to the belt that has the stripe in it. So let's say, for instance, let's say the stripe represents the embroidery, okay? The stripe represents the embroidery. Or maybe you're just in a system where you wear a belt that has a vertical stripe through it, okay? I want to make sure that my embroidery, like I said, is on the inside. So when I find that, that center point of the belt, okay, the embroidery is on the inside facing itself, okay? So here we see there's no stripe, meaning the embroidery is facing in. Go underneath both layers. Now that bottom tail, right, again, we shouldn't see an embroidery. So when I flip it, I can see both sides, one side with it and one side without it. So when I tie it, we see that it's on the outside now. Okay? It's on the outside now. Now, if you're in a system, where your belt, you do have a stripe in your belt, and you want the stripe to be to show on the tails, then you have to do it this way. If you want the stripe here on the waist, then you have to do it the other way around, correct? But if we do it the other way around, it'll be flipped. All right, so we want to remember that. If I go the other way around, and I put the embroidery or the stripe on the outside, then we're going to wind up with the vertical stripe where our embroidery is going to wind up now on the inside, facing each other like that. Okay? So it's just opposite. If you want your embroidery, your stripe on the outside, you got to make sure when you start, it's on the inside, and vice versa. Okay? That's for our standard knot variation. All right, guys, so now that you understand how to do that with your standard knot variation and have your embroidery show, we do have a little bit of an issue when we want to go to our grapplers knot. Let's say, all right, so I've got my belt, and I had it on the inside so that when I tie my belt, if I do my standard knot, my embroidery is on the outside so we can see this, right? If I'm going to do my grappler's knot, and it doesn't matter if you do this or don't do this, just so that you understand it. If I do my grappler's knot this way, it winds up putting my embroidery facing in towards me so I can't see that if I choose to do the grapplers not that way. So how do we fix this? We just tie it in reverse. So if I'm going to choose to do the grapplers not, I want to make sure my embroidery is not facing the inside. Instead, I want to turn this around so that my embroidery faces the outside. If my embroidery faces the outside, then, with the catch method, when I choose to do my grappler's knot, I bring this through, and I go in between the two layers here, and in between the two layers here, now my embroidery will show it. Okay. So that's a difference. You want to make sure that if you're going to do, if you want to display your embroidery or display your stripe or whatever it is, we want to make sure if you're going to use that grappler's knot that you initially have your embroidery out. Okay. Okay. So for just a little bit of color contrast and help you guys see this a little bit better, again we're talking about the grappler's knot, right, with the embroidery. Or maybe I have a, a system where my where I have a stripe belt, right. So this I want to make sure that my stripe is on the outside of the belt when I line it up outside of the belt. So now, good catch. Now when I tie this, and I want to do my grappler's knot, I come through, go in between the two layers, 
go in between the two layers. Now, my embroidery or my vertical stripe will show. And as you can see with this belt, it shows that the embroidery side or the stripe side is out. Okay? That's the nice thing about using something like this for demonstrations. You can actually see which side of the belt is facing in and facing out. Okay, so I've got a couple bonuses here for you. So sometimes in some systems and some belts, um, some belts will shred over time. Uh, they'll shred or they'll wear through. As you saw my black belt before, uh, my oldest black belt is almost white. It shredded so much over time. Now, sometimes it's just the make of the belt. Some systems actually prefer that the, you know, they, they get that specific so the belt eventually shreds back to white to complete the cycle. You know, whatever, whatever system you're in, that doesn't matter. But what does matter is that if that's part of what you want to see happen, you need to understand how the seams work in your belt. Okay? A lot of people hardly ever talk about this. I've actually never seen anybody put out a video on this or talk about it. This is just something I kind of discovered over time. So with a belt, you're going to find on the edges, you're going to have two, two kinds of edges. One is going to have a seam where it's sewn together. And one is just going to be folded over real nice with the, with the cloth that's just folded over. So we want to talk, we want to make sure we understand the difference between the seam and the fold over. Here's a closer look. Okay, so a little bit closer view as you can see here. We have the seam of the belt on one side, right? And then on the other side, no seam. It's just folded over nicely. Just folded over nicely. Seam, no seam. So why are those two important? It's, only, it's important if you care about how your belt looks and how you want to represent. Now, this is not about vanity. This is not about necessarily you got to look a certain way. I really don't care how it looks, but it's always good to have the knowledge so you can make the choice and make the decision, right? So here we go. On the seam side, over time, over the years, your belt will shred versus on the side where it's folded over and there's no seam, that will wear, okay? So it'll shred and you can see this is really shredded out and frayed apart, right? Versus just general wear, okay, where it's a little bit more smoother. Let's bring this in for a closer look. Okay, so for a close-up view, here we see the seam side. So we can see it's very shredded, little pieces coming off and all that kind of stuff, right? That's the seam side versus the side that's folded over, as we can see, this is much cleaner, a much, much cleaner edge. Okay, much cleaner edge. So it's your seam, and that's the side that's folded over right there. Okay, so again, why is this important? It's not really important. It's only important depending on how you want your belt to look. That's all there is. For me personally, I always put, uh, I like the folded side as my knot, right? So it just looks a little bit cleaner. So how do I do that? Anytime you have one side up, the other side is going to be the knot. So, for instance, if I put the seam side up, facing up towards me, it means that my knot, or the edges of my knot where they rub against each other, will always be the folded area. So, for instance, my seam is up, so when I tie my knot in my standard variation here, you can see that it's the folded over side where there's no seam is what rubs against each other there. Just kind of giving my knot a little bit more of a cleaner look. And not only a cleaner look, it just holds a little bit better too. When I, it kind of has a little bit more bite okay, when I do that. Now, if you were to look at it the other way, which isn't good or bad, right? If I just turn this around so that the folded side is up and that the seam is down. Here, you're going to see it's going to be a little bit different. All right, so fold the side is up, seam is down, which means my knot is going to be the seam side. And you're going to get a little bit more of a shredded look over time, a little bit more messier. It's not really my cup of tea. When it shreds like this, it's really hard to stay tied because there's not a whole lot of bite to it. So anyway, so for myself personally, I like to have my seam facing up. When I tie my belt, and this doesn't matter if you're doing a standard knot or a grappler's knot. It really doesn't matter. It's the same thing. If you have the seam up, you'll have the folded and the no seam side as your knot. So that's kind of one little bonus that, that a perfectionist like me notice those types of things. Okay, another bonus for you guys. There is a third knot that exists out there. Uh, it's not my favorite. Uh, I prefer either the standard knot or the grappler's knot, but there's what I call the floppy ears, right? And you'll see this with some people. It's not necessarily good or bad. Again, this is personal preference, right? 
And I'm going to use uh, the belt with the embroidery, so that you can see this. So the floppy ear is not. Okay. So what happens? Let's say I tie this with my embroidery on the outside. Okay. My embroidery on the outside of the belt, just like we would do for our grapplers knot, right? So I come around. Whichever method, I like the catch method, right? We bring this around, and we get here. We tie our belt, but we use the standard method. We, t we set it up for the grappler, but we want to be using the standard method, and so we see our braids on the inside. Sometimes you will see people do what I call the floppy ear method, right? And essentially what that is, is they've got their belt tied, and since it, since it doesn't land on the inside like this, they will take their belt and they will flop this over top like that and it kind of looks like I always think it looks like a like a hound dog with the floppy ears or a bunny with the floppy ears not not always been my personal cup of tea but I do see people that do this I'm not a huge fan of this because when like stand to the side don't stick straight out All right? but you will see some people that do this like this so if you ever like wait a minute I don't understand how come how come my ears are all floppy or my tails are all floppy out on the belt in order to get my embroidery out that's because you set it up to actually tie it for your grappler's knot variation. So if you wind up with the floppy bunny ears or the, the floppy puppy ears or whatever you, want to look, whatever you want to call it, that's probably why. Okay, so just one more little thing we want to give you, just a little bonus, and that's how you wear your belt. Okay, How you wear your belt kind of is a demonstration right, to the pride you take in your school, the pride you take in yourself, how you treat yourself, how you want to look, and the message we send to other people. And so how we tie our belt, whether we're sloppy or whether we're sharp looking, sends that message. Right? It sends that message. So it's sort of like, um, you know, if, if somebody comes out in a chef's uniform and hands you a steak versus comes out in the uniform that say like a garbage man would wear with garbage and smuts all over him, you know, and hands you your hands you a steak. You know, which which one of those steaks are more appetizing? The guy in the garbage uniform or the guy wearing the chef's uniform, right? So how we present things is important. Right? So the V is what I call this, right? So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put my belt on. Whichever method I choose, I'm gonna use the the uh, standard knot, right, with the catch method for tying. Now, now that I've done this, okay, got my little arrow, everything's looking good, looking sharp, right? You get some people, like, they just, they tie it, and they, okay, I'm good. Whew. How does this look? This looks unprofessional, right? They, they, they pull it up and down, right? This does not look good to start with. So that's why we want to make sure our tails, to our belt, they come to the side and they hang down nice. So I always kind of help position them a little bit, right? I actually will not. If our knot is up above our belly button and is way up here, this does this is not as professional looking. This is not as sharp looking as what I call the V. So with the V, I'm simply going to take my thumbs, I'm going to stick them in the belt, and I kind of push it down a little bit. I pull the top up just a touch, kind of straighten everything out, right? Looking good for presentation, and you see the V shape right here. Now, not everybody has the body to make the V shape, but we want to try, right? So I get the V shape right here all right so the knot is higher than the back of the belt okay if it's the other way around if you're if you are excuse me, not as lower if you're not as higher in the back of the belt all right this has a different different presentation to it than this so i like to try to always make the v i feel it looks sharp and it sends a message to your students, it sends a message to your fellow training partners, it sends a message to anybody who walks into your school looking to get involved in martial arts for the first time, wow these guys look sharp, they know what they're doing, they at least they look like they know what they're doing, I want to train here, I want to train with these guys. Versus somebody walking in and you know you're, you're all up here like this and you've tied your belt wrong and it's over this way here, even to a person that doesn't do martial arts, they walk in for the first time, they look at this and they go, that doesn't look right, that looks sloppy. Compared to the school down the street, right? They walk in because they're checking out places in town. They know. They're looking around. They're good consumers. You come in and you're looking sharp. This sends a message to them too. This is, this is the place to train. We know what we're doing here. Okay, guys. So there you have it. T. Kent Nelson's definitive guide on how to tie your belt. Probably way more information than you wanted or even knew was available. You know how you tie your belt? 
how you wear your belt, how you decide you want to represent yourself in your school, it really doesn't matter. What does matter is that whichever way you choose, you got to have the knowledge to be able to do that. And now after watching this video, you have the knowledge. So, once you have these skills, you'll be ready to take on even the toughest opponents.